It seems like the more people I talk to, the more people tell me they're using Mac Minis for their home theater setup, which totally makes sense considering their tiny size and relatively inexpensive price tag. If I were going that route, my biggest concern would be that I have enough hard drive space to store all of my TV shows and movies. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the hard drive in a Core Duo Mac Mini. This video is a great overview of the process, but of course, when you're upgrading your hard drive, you'll want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and the repair guide on our site. The version that I'm working on is a Core Duo model, and while the process is very similar for the Core 2 Duo model, there are enough differences that you want to make sure you're following the guide specific to your model of Mac Mini. I know that the lack of visible screws can be intimidating, but with a little bit of gentle prying and some patience, you will be in and out of there in no time. That all being said, I'm going to get my parts and tools together so I can get started. For this repair, you're going to need a set of small tweezers, a plastic spudger, a Phillips 00 screwdriver, and of course, your replacement hard drive. Typically, I would use a bit from one of our bit driver kits, but because some of these screws are kind of difficult to access, I would recommend using a dedicated driver instead. And of course, you're going to need something to pry open your Mac Mini. So if you've got a putty knife laying around, you can file down the edge of that and it'll work fine. I'm going to use a tool called an iSesimo, which is designed specifically for opening up electronics, so it's a little more forgiving than a putty knife, and that means it'll probably cause less cosmetic damage when you're opening up your machine. So if you're concerned about cosmetic damage, I would go for the iSesimo. To get started, I'm going to flip the Mac Mini over so that the back is facing me, and then I'm going to use my iSesimo to start prying away the aluminum case from the bottom housing. I'm going to start back near this corner, and it might require a little more force than you're comfortable with. As soon as I get that part up, I'm just going to start going around the edge and lifting the rest of the edges up. Once all the edges are lifted up and you've got a nice gap between the bottom housing and the aluminum case, you're going to flip the Mac Mini over again. And the aluminum case should just lift up and off. At this point, you can do a little dance because with the top case off, we're actually done with the hardest part. The next thing we're going to do is remove the internal frame, which includes the optical drive from the housing. And to start, we're going to remove the airport antenna by squeezing these two little posts and lifting it off. You don't want to squeeze too hard because you might break the posts. So be gentle. Now, the antenna is still attached to the computer, so don't go yanking it off, but we can just kind of drape it over to the side for now. The next thing we're going to work on is disconnecting the audio board cable and the hard drive thermal sensor cable. The audio board cable is a standard ZIF style connector, so once the locking mechanism is lifted up, the cable just comes right out. The hard drive thermal sensor cable is a little trickier because it's a pretty small connector and it's in a tight spot. So we're going to use our tweezers to grasp the connector, not the wires, and then pull it straight up and out. It might be useful if you use your spudger to kind of guide the connector out of its socket. Now that those cables are disconnected, we can get to work on the four screws that are holding the frame in place. These screws are kind of difficult to access, so this is where having a dedicated driver comes in handy, especially one that's magnetized. With those screws out, the frame should just lift up and out pretty easily. Slow and steady is good though because you don't want to snag any cables on the way out. With the frame out, we can flip it over and there's the hard drive. The hard drive is held in place by four Phillips screws, so I'll go ahead and remove those.
with this last screw out, the hard drive should slide out pretty easily. With the old hard drive out, all I've got to do is transfer this foam tape to my new hard drive, install my new hard drive, and reassemble my computer. Of course, before you use it, you're going to have to install the operating system, and if you need help with that, there is a handy OS X install guide on our site to get you up and running. Of course, you can find all of the parts and tools for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com. And if you run into any problems doing your repairs, there are lots of solutions in the Mac Mini Repair Guide on our site. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com ifixit. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.